we'd finished using up the bag of minced garlic that we'd freeze dried and we need to get another one. This is the last one we have freeze dried, but we've already bought nine more pounds to freeze dry. I find it very handy to have and it's an inexpensive way to get a lot of minced garlic. If you want whole clove garlic, that'd be a different thing and you'd probably process it differently. This stuff from Costco works great for me. And it says that it's in this very bin right here. I should have mentioned the point of this is we're making another batch of beef stew and we needed some garlic. So this one has a couple of miscellaneous things in it, including the last of our minced garlic. And this can go back up. And we've got one more thing. And then the other thing we need is some uh, tomato puree. 19B would put it in back of 19 front. So 917, wow. So these are from our garden. Well, I'm probably gonna be making a couple of batches of the stew, so I'll go ahead and get the four cup one. And this is very early on. It's been about three years or close to three years since we've made a batch of beef stew. Uh, we're down to the last 21 bags of it on our in our freeze dried storage. And two of them are from 2017. We'll probably rehydrate one of those to show that. Now, we're starting with four and a half pounds of lean, fairly lean beef cut into small cubes, and we need to brown that. And typically, you would brown that in small batches in a frying pan or something. Uh, that's too much work. So I'm going to put it on cookie sheets and put it in the oven. I've got the oven preheating to 425 with a convection oven and in about 20 minutes they'll be fairly browned. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce and quarter cup of flour to coat them all and then put them on the baking sheets with a bit of olive oil on the sheets to keep it from sticking. It seems to work pretty well. We've done that way a couple of times with different meats and I'm kind of happy with that because I'm too lazy to brown all the meat little loads at a time in the pan because this is just one batch we're actually doing two batches so it would take a lot of browning in a pan a few teaspoons maybe a tablespoon of soy sauce because i like the flavor it's kind of optional you could use something else and if you didn't use anything you could just add perhaps some salt or salt and pepper to the flour or some other spices but you're going to cook it well anyway. Then we'll sprinkle the quarter cup of flour on it to kind of coat it. We'll just sprinkle it a bit. Kind of toss it. I should have probably put it in a couple of bowls so that it would be easier to mix. Or maybe even put it on the sheets first, sprinkle it, and then mix them around. Anyway, it seems to do okay though. Okay, that's good enough. Put a bit of olive oil on the pan. And I know some people freak out when they see any oil or any greases that are going to be dealing with freeze drying. It's going to be 40 or 50 cups of stew. There's extremely small amount of oil in it. And if you'll look at commercially made freeze dried, and I'll link some or show some, you'll see there's plenty of fats in lots of commercial freeze-dried stuff. Yeah. Now I've got three trays here, so I don't have to get this all on one, obviously. So I want to spread this out enough so that it's um, spaced to brown. And I did probably half inch or five eighths inch cubes. A little smaller would have been fine. And frankly, you could go with whatever size you want. The bigger the size, the longer it's going to take to rehydrate when you go to rehydrate it. The smaller pieces rehydrate much, much quicker. In fact, these seem smaller when I was cutting them. Now they look pretty big. I wish I'd have made them smaller. Oh, well, this is what I've got now. I'm just kind of trying to push them apart a little bit because if they have space all the way around them I'll get better browning.
And as I mentioned, I've got two batches of this, so I've got to go through this twice. As soon as this one's done, I can empty the pans and just reuse these pans for the other batch. So those will go into the oven as soon as that's hot. Got it preheating to 425. We'll put them in there for probably about 15 or 20 minutes until they start to brown really nicely. Oh, oven's up to temperature. And so this is just part of getting all the materials prepped or all of the ingredients prepped. I already have the carrots cut, the onions cut. Now getting the beef browned. Okay. Okay, there's a tray of that 20 minutes later. Got some nice browning on the tips and edges and nicely cooked and it doesn't have to be a hundred percent cooked through and through because it's going to go in the stew so as long as it's got some nice browning that's good enough for me okay then i'll uh, temporarily put that into another bowl or a pot and wait till it's time to assemble everything All right so i'm working on the batches of beef stew i'm doing one smaller batch because we had some leftover ingredients very finely chopped mushrooms I'm going to put in it for a flavor. I think freeze-dried mushrooms and then powdered would be a great way to go for the beef stew. I've got the garlic. This is our last bag of minced garlic that we had freeze-dried a few years ago. And I've got three more containers of it that I'm about to freeze-dry so we won't run out. And tomato sauce from our batch 12 back in September of 2017. And this was from our garden and it has some spices in it. So hopefully it'll be good for this. I do not remember what we put in it. It's been a long time. These were ones that we pre froze in little containers because um, we weren't really sure how to handle smaller amounts, but we still wanted to pre freeze. So this was one cup for each one of these little cubes. So I'll do a little taste test to make sure I like the spices uh, as far as going into stew, but it should be fine. So on the video, I'm going to mostly focus on the, the bigger batch, so the next batch, but I do have some four ounces of bacon in this one. So mostly I want to add some very fine mushrooms to add more of a beefy flavor to this. So we'll cook those down a bit and then start adding all the other ingredients. And again, we'll focus mostly on the bigger batch. I'm using red potatoes this time. We've used uh, the Yukon Golds. We've used russets. Russets in the stew is not necessarily the best we find because they break down so nicely into mashed potatoes. Uh, the Yukon Golds in the red definitely hold up better. And I'm trying to do about three eighths, maybe half inch cubes. So much better than commercial or much bigger than commercially made beef stew. Yeah, that's freeze dried. But perhaps a little smaller than I would normally would if we were never going to freeze dry them. Probably more like half inch cubes. Anyway, for this batch, we need 2700 grams about about six pounds and we'll just get all these cut up and I'm putting them into a bowl of cold water as I cut them Yeehaw! so I've already browned and drained the bacon now I'm going to add the mushrooms and then the onions and then basically everything else goes into the pot uh, after the mushrooms and onions carrots. I'll probably add the red wine and see if I can deglaze this pan a bit. But because I'm going to do most of the cook in the oven, I probably don't have to worry too much about it sticking. I don't mind cooking the mushrooms down until they're basically gone and just flavor because I don't want mushroom pieces in my stew. I just want some of the flavor that that's going to give. Add back in a little bit of the bacon fat. Could use butter, of course. And no, I'm not worried about a little bit of fat in my stew. This is going to be more than 40 cups of stew. There's going to be very little fat per serving per bag. 
put a lid on that and let that steam for just a, a minute. Now I'm going to add the onions in. And that just means the oven's up to temperature. And that was two and a half pounds of onions, 1130 grams, about eight cups. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add the cup of red wine. And we don't actually drink wine at all. We just keep it good wine for cooking. Okay, deglaze that pot a little bit. You can see that it cleans the, all the good bits right off the bottom of the pan. And next, we've got five pounds of carrots, which is 2,270 grams of them. And again, I think I cut them a little big. They're supposed to be like three-eighths. It's more like a half. And we'll get the, all the meat in there. This is the one that I cooked ahead of time. So it's just been sitting waiting in the refrigerator. I prep a lot of the ingredients ahead of time and uh, over a day or two when I'm doing a lot of big batches. And then I'll add the one that we did today. So normally our batch would have, our, our normal recipe was four and a half pounds of the beef cut up into little pieces and browned, but we had an extra piece, so I went ahead and cut it, and we have seven pounds this time. And that's seven pounds after we cut it, not after it's been cooked. Of course, you lose some of it during cooking, some of the weight to the water. I better get the bigger spoon. All right, the big spoon. Next is the potatoes and liquid. And I'm just using canned beef broth because that's what I had right now. You could, of course, make homemade broth, which would be awesome. A couple of bay leaves, three tablespoons of the freeze-dried garlic, and because I didn't bother crushing it, some of it's kind of crunchy, but it comes apart right away in there. Better than beef bouillon. I like to add about four tablespoons of that to really beef this baby up. And I'm using the beef broth that has salt in it, so I'm not adding any salt right now at all. Now, I still need to add the potatoes. And this batch was really designed for this pot because it maxes it out. And when we make a bigger batch, a double batch, or a one and a half times batch, then we have to get the big pot out. Because this one's only four or five gallons for this pot. Then we have the big one. Okay, you can see not real liquidy. Oops, I almost forgot. I need the tomato sauce in there still. So I'm going to mix this with just enough water to make it basically a paste so that it will go in there without pulling extra liquid out of there. And I can still feel that it's probably a few kind of dry spots. I think there's enough to rehydrate it so that it won't be drawing liquid out. Okay, now the potatoes. So at this point, the only thing left to add is the cornstarch for thickening and then the two pounds of cut green beans, which I'll put in at the very end while they're still frozen to help cool this off real quick. And there's plenty of residual heat to thoroughly heat the beans because their frozen beans are already blanched, so they really don't need to be cooked that much but I can help cool it off to get it ready for the pans because, the, of course, it's boiling hot. Let's see, anything else? And then, of course, salt and pepper to taste. I've got it in the oven at 225. We'll come back and check it in an hour and a half or two hours. Give it a stir and then give it more time. It's been about an hour and a half that that's been in there. I'm going to take it out, stir it, and put it back in. It should need at least two or three or more hours minimum because it's quite a big batch takes a while yeah it's kind of like a slow cooker 
and it's cooking slowly. I, I do like the angle of this one. Ah, don't rest your hand on the edge of the pot. <laughs> anyway, 132, nowhere near. Uh, and besides, I'm not really worried about the exact temperature as much as the potatoes and the beef being tender. That extra beef is kind of nice. That is beefier than our normal beef stew. We might have to change our recipe and go with seven pounds instead of four and a half. When it comes to beef in your beef stew, I think more is better. So that'll go back in and we'll check it in a couple more hours. And we'll check it then. And check it now. Hour and a half at the 325. So much warmer. After an additional hour, the carrots and potatoes are now tender. Now we'll thicken it and then add the two pounds of green beans. I like to do the green beans at the very end while they're frozen also. And that helps cool this down and get it ready for putting in pans. So the other ingredient to add. I've got cornstarch mixed in two cups of beef bouillon in it or better than beef. That way I don't add just water to it. And I'll pour that in there and stir it to help thicken it up. And this probably isn't the best thickener considering I'm going to be freezing it, but it's the one we use, we've been using, and then it's good for dinner tonight, tomorrow, lunch, and then we can re-thicken it after it's been frozen. We can re-thicken it with instant clear gel. So we might try changing to cooked clear gel for this initial thickening so that we won't have it break down as much during freezing. And that was about uh, eight or nine tablespoons of cornstarch. All right, so now we've got the cut green beans and I just use frozen ones. Some people would prefer to have peas in it. Uh, my sister would make it without carrots. She doesn't like cook carrots this way, but she does like peas in it. You could add celery, would be perfectly good if you want celery in it. And I just remembered there's two bay leaves in here somewhere. There's one. Gotta get the shrubbery out. Gotta ask yourself, if I were a bay leaf, where would I be? Well, we'll find it when we're dishing it up, even if we don't find it right now. So then I'll add the uh, green beans, which will help cool it and get it ready for putting it into the pans too. That's one of the reasons we add the green beans at the very end. And because I don't like my green beans to be overcooked. And since they're frozen green beans, they would have been blanched first. Pretty much all frozen vegetables have been blanched or partway cooked when they're processed. So I don't really need to cook them that long. I just need to heat them thoroughly because I do not want my green beans to be cooked until they're gray beans. That would be like home cooking when I grew up. That touch of green adds a beautiful color to it and brightens it right up. And peas would do that too. And some people would add corn to it. I mean, you can literally, you could make the, your beef stew the way you want beef stew. Okay, I'll just add a little fresh ground pepper on there. And that's not very much considering the size of pot it is. So we have our pans here that we're going to be panning them up in. We'll put one pound in each. And then a few of them, we'll put the divider in the middle to divide it into two half pounds so we can uh, fill up the tray when we go to freeze dry. And the difference between these two sets of pans is this one has a little X on it. But seriously, we bought these at two different times from the Dollar Tree over, well, more than two different times, four or five different times over a big period of time. And this doesn't quite match the slope of these new ones. So I'd have to redesign this slightly. So we put an X on it to know not to use it with the dividers. Anyway, so now they can be panned up and that'll help them cool quicker so that it won't overcook. So I'm gonna start with a couple of these with the dividers. I'll we'll just spray very lightly the pans and the divider and then wipe it down. I just need a thin film of the cooking spray on it to keep it from sticking when I go to take them out. 
It really doesn't take much to make a huge difference. Now make sure I have the scale zeroed and not touching the pan. Make sure we have everything stirred up nicely and get a scoop of it. Now we want eight ounces on each side. Make sure I have it on ounces. Okay, that was a little bit high now. So when I end up with the stew usually going slightly heavy, I mean parts of a gram or parts of an ounce. This is about a half an ounce heavy, but that's not a big problem. Uh, then when I call it a pound later and put that amount of water in, it just won't, it'll just leave it a little bit thicker, which is just fine. Now this one's ready to go to the freezer and be pre-frozen. I'll go ahead and do all the divider ones first. Oh, and these have a magnet in there to help hold them so they don't float up. The pans without the divider, it's just the same thing. You just put some of the cooking spray on it. Make sure that it's always make sure that it's kind of stirred up. I want to try to get an even mix of pieces and, and the sauce part. And that's ready for pre-freezing. So far I've got 22 of these filled, so that's 22 pounds. If we bag them one pound in a bag, that's 22 bags of them, 22 meals, uh, definitely at least 22 stir servings, because they're two cup servings basically. And I still have enough for a few more pans, plus we ate some, and I think I'm going to save most of what we have left uh, for lunch and dinner tomorrow. But that gives us 22 of them. That's more than two batches, plus we had three left over last time. Going to try the stainless steel rod piece again. So I'm going to just kind of wiggle that into there, lay it on the piece of plastic, and I'll have more of those in additional ones. There's at least 10 more cups here, probably at least 11, so 55 cups. Okay, these are ready to go to the freezer. Now we'll get the pans into the freezer for pre-freezing. So I can get six pans on a layer and then I have the corrugated plastic pieces and I cut the one corner out uh, to accommodate the coolant line back there. And I can just put another layer. So we'll keep filling that up with the next batch and then we'll be popping them out of there and putting them in ziplocks. We'll keep getting those stacked in there and as soon as those are frozen, they'll be frozen by tomorrow, and I can pop them out and put them in ziplocks before the next set need to go in there. The beef stew has had overnight to freeze and sometimes I put it directly on the freeze dryer trays if the timing is right. Most often it goes into zipper bags to wait its turn and I'm using the little corrugate plastic sheet to insulate things from the table. Just kind of pop the edges out a little bit because these pans are kind of flexible. And then I can push up on the bottom, give it a little twist, and the block pops out. And then I've got a one pound block of stew. And of course handle it gently and don't warm it up because I don't want it to be melty. And I can get about four, I can get about four pounds, four one pound blocks of stew of very heavy things. Rice are th is thicker, but I can get about four of those in a gallon bag. And I can put, of course, a lot more in a two gallon bag. So that gets zippered up. And if I knew for sure that it was going to be a very long time, I could always seal a meal of these, but hopefully it won't be too long. Okay, so that goes back in the freezer to wait its turn. I'm going to get all these loaded while the freeze dryer is still chilling and then they can just sit in the freezer until it's cold enough.